hi guys welcome back to my channel welcome 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 i know i have been missing for a whole four months um going on to five but guys i'm back i know you missed me you in the back you in the back and you in the front and guys i missed you too I really really missed you all welcome back to Monique's world and guys we do everything over here makeup cooking everything everything under the Sun um I want to start by telling you where I've been I think the last video I posted might have been um, July month end yeah i think july month end i want to remind you guys that i am just beginning so this youtube thing is very very new help me to grow remember to smash the subscribe button turn your post notification on that is the bell so that when i upload you will be notified of my new content that is how we small youtubers will grow and um continue to you know maintain and grow our channel now july month end um as a matter of fact from june we were planning to celebrate my aunt's birthday which is in august which is about five days before my anniversary so my aunt hobby and myself planned to go to a hotel relax have some fun eat drink you know the shebang when you go to an all-inclusive hotel so that was the plan for august her birthday is the 15th and uh, my anniversary would have been the 20th so that was the plan so the first of august came and um went to do my hair because you know gotta be fly did my brows I think I did my nails ready to you know celebrate the two big events that were happening because her birthday would have been the 60th so she wanted to that's what she wanted to do so we said no problem planned the hotel paid for it the first week of August um, I think I was on the road with her and it was a really hot day so it was hot we were driving under the ac and um i was thirsty so i grabbed a bottle of water the water was really really cold when i say cold it had ice in it so i drank the water um was really refreshing um i noticed the day after that i was feeling a bit stuffy so I attributed that to me drinking the ice water you know because it was so hot and the water had in ice so I said to myself self is the ice cold water we drink so take two pill rub up with some alcohol because you know that is our grandparents remedies rub up with alcohol pour a little in your head sap the head put little vicks on your, ch your, your chest and cold gone flu gone whatever it is so I noticed two days after I was still having the symptoms and the symptoms were stuffiness, slight headache, you know, like the normal flu. So I watched that flu-like symptom. Right, fast forward to August 13th, um, went to the doctor because I noticed I was having a bit of shortness of breath as well. Went to the doctor. Did the COVID test, the COVID test was negative. The COVID test changed to positive. Mm -hmm. Guys, a million things ran through my mind. I was thinking to myself, where could you have caught COVID? When did you go without your mask? Did I not sanitize my hands properly? Have I given it to anybody else? Guys, a million questions, I kid you not. Am I gonna die? 
am I gonna make it? <sighs> Guys, I kid you not, a million questions. So that was the 13th of August um, in the evening, she called. So I did the x-ray, the results showed that, well, I sent the results to my doctor. She said that I have I developed pneumonia and I told her that I have now developed um, diarrhea as well. So I had stuffy nose, coughing, shortness of breath, diarrhea, that's a headache, headache, all of the symptoms, all of the symptoms. So this was Saturday now, um, Saturday everything got worse rush me to the hospital rush me to the hospital guys when i got to the hospital the breathing got worse so they rushed me in they hooked me up to the oxygen tank because i did tell them you know that i tested positive for covid the friday this is a sunday now and um they were asking me a million and one questions so they opened me up to the oxygen mask and when she checked my oxygen level my oxygen level was at 53 if you guys know but normal oxygen level should be at 95 and above because um, i think i was getting oxygen for about 45 minutes or so so they said to me that um based on the x-ray that i did because i did save a copy of the x-ray to show them i said based on the x-ray that they're looking at my right lungs is collapsed from the virus and it seems as if i have air on the lungs guys by this time i ball me a ball down the place not crying enough ball down the place because i was thinking to myself I am very active and when I say very active if you know me you know I go to the gym very very regular um, four days per week I'm at the gym Monday Tuesday Wednesday and Friday I'm at the gym and I rarely miss the gym I eat very very good eat my veggies do my regular detox drink my juices eat very very good so i was thinking if covid caught if, if i was to catch or catch covid i was thinking that it would just bounce off my shoulders like that but nope that's not what happened because when they told me that my lungs had collapsed and had air on it and they now had to cut me guys i start ball more come did a ball before so she said let me send you to do another x-ray so they sent me to do another x-ray to confirm what the x-ray that i did on friday showed when i did the x-ray and i came back she was like yeah the lungs is collapsed air is on the lungs and unless we get that air of the lungs you will not be able to breathe properly <sighs> everything come to my mind I've never been to the hospital prior to this. When I say never, I mean never. Not to what I can remember. Might have been before, you know, I was an adult, maybe when I was a child, but no hospital visits for me. Cause I was very active, very healthy, as far as I'm concerned. Guys, I'm a tell us about them. Wheel me up. Is it two doctor come to me? Um, because I was on the COVID ward, the beds were like seven eight feet apart um they put the screen around my bed and the doctor told me to lie on my side um when i lay on my side he said i should take the bra off but guys the way all me afraid but just tell him say cut the bra off come and now get up back and him cut the bra off so what they did was i'm gonna try and insert a pic um from google what they did 
so i'm gonna try to explain as best as possible what they did as well so because it's the right side that the lungs had collapsed i had to lay on the left side so when i lay on the left side they taped my breasts let me try to fix this they taped my breasts up because they wanted to cut here right here so they went through my fourth and my fifth rib so they taped the breasts up and they counted and feel where the fourth and the fifth rib was so i got two injections that should have um deadened the area never work because when he said i'm gonna cut and he cut i felt that cut i feel it it never hot hot but i could feel that cut you see when he inserted that tube in guys remember somebody did start ball from the downstairs you know from them tell me what they were gonna do my start ball my scream for my father my scream for my mother my scream for my husband my scream for my mother again guys my father did I'm here to listen to scream for him. That's how hot it was. And they pushed and they pushed and they pushed that tube in. If you know how the body is, the rib cage, the right other place there, and they must go through that for each the lungs. Guys, I want to tell them of them push and them push. <sighs> Guys, I am really trying not to get emotional while I am doing this video because I'm telling you that that was an ordeal. It was an ordeal. And as soon as he started talking to me, because I think when he was almost finished um pushing in that tube he could not get the last part in so he started talking to me and as soon as i was about to answer he made that last push in with the tube and may i tell you say after i push me tell him no more i said doctor while i was crying i said if that tube don't reach where it's supposed to reach don't push it no more. I can't it no more. No. Guys, I'm going to tell you my ball. My ball. My ball. And a long time in a ball. My ball. I cried. I hollered. So that was the last push that he made. So when he pushed and I was doing that last scream, he said to me, and that was he was he did an amazing job i know he did an amazing job because i was but I, while i was crying you know he, he was trying to comfort me telling me that you know even though it seems as if he's hurting me he's trying to save my life and it will be over soon and you know it will be fine it will be fine so I, he was doing an amazing job but the pain was over him trying to comfort me at that point so i just wanted him to be done and to just leave me the alone yeah so after he pushed that tube in he said to me listen listen so his finger was at the end of the tube and when he lifted his finger up i hear i could hear the air coming off the lungs it went ch ch I think about three times it made that sound so he said that is the air that's coming off the lungs so i think when he when he lift his finger off the fourth time he didn't make any sound so he attached that tube to another tube and he put that in a bottle which they didn't explain to me that the tube would stay in for a couple of days and they would attach it to a bottle for any fluid to come out any excess blood to come out 
So immediately when the air came off the lungs, I could feel the breathing getting extremely good. So I was feeling like myself again, with the exception that I had a tube in because I left that tube in. And I will try to insert a pick because because it was COVID, you could not have you could not have anybody close to you that was on the on the ward. So I wasn't able to have somebody take a pic or do a video. So any video that I attach um, is what I try to take of it. Another Sunday and I'm still in the hospital. Oxygen level is doing really good. Still have this in my arm. Downgrade it to a small oxygen level. I'm ready to go. Two days to the next side. So I was in the hospital for an additional 10 days with that tube in. Then the doctor said he's coming to take out the tube. Guys, I start ball again. Cause I'm thinking, all right, the tube is in. Um, naturally my body would have started the healing process. So I have a feel when that I come out. So my ball, I said to him, doctor, I will give me one injection, right? Because I know it's a hot. <laughs> so I said no. Um, normally we don't, but I see that your tolerance for pain is very low. So I'm gonna give you one. So I'm giving me the injection. I lay on my side again. Gave me the injection. And he took it out and I didn't feel it. Because when I saw him tearing the um what do you call that? The thing to put over the, the, the scar. I was like, um, you cut, you tearing that already? So he's like, yeah, I'm done. I said, okay, I didn't feel it. He was like, I told you you wouldn't feel it. Because all he did was pull the thing out. I felt nothing. I don't know if me not feeling it was because he gave me that one injection, but I didn't feel it. So he put the bandage over it and guys, my happy thinking to myself now all right to come out tomorrow I'm gonna make me go warm nope I stayed in the hospital for four more days doing a million x-rays a million x-rays they watched me ensure that my oxygen level was over 95 I did physiotherapy because what they do is when they take you into the hospital if your oxygen level is four liters what they do is they try to wean you off the oxygen so if day one you're on four day two they'll try to give you three day four they'll give you two day five they'll give you one day six sorry day six they will try to take you off watch where your oxygen level is if you are able to maintain like over 91 they will take you off and they will watch you to see how you are breathing without the oxygen so that is what they did with me so they kept me in the hospital for four additional days after taking out the tube and um i was discharged exactly 14 days after being in the hospital so i was admitted the 15th of august i was discharged the 29th of august two weeks exactly so they said to me that you know they gave me a prescription because i'm still healing from the cut um i need to take my magnesium and quarantine for two weeks and i should come back for review at the end of my two weeks so guys my happy when i say my happy i was extremely happy to be home even though they told me that i needed to quarantine um try to stay away from everybody even if my household is full you know all of that quarantine stuff did that that was very hard hobby sleep in one bed me sleep in one bed he on bathroom he the other bathroom that was a very very 
hard and one of the longest two weeks ever but I survived he survived and guys I mean we survived barely but we made it so at the end of two weeks I'm happy now you know because it's a quarantine done back to work back to the hustle back to you know everything that I've not been able to do for a month because two weeks in the hospital and then two weeks quarantine is one month four weeks to be exact <sighs> guess what went back for my review at the doctor when I went to do the review thinking that you know everything good girl good time for my exercise uh, you know eat the good things then back to normal yeah when I go for my review the doctor said I'm going to do one x-ray when I go to the x-ray and come back guess what the doctor tell me bet you never guess may I give you one guess you in the back one guess so the doctor said no I asked her so I said how soon after can I take the vaccine she said um after two weeks it should be good you know after two weeks it should be good guys I'm gonna tell us the doctor they come from the Peter L she come from the Peter L I'm a sorry about the her name because I would have say it if I did get her name but I don't remember the name but she had a very bad night and she come for throw her problem for me so she said after the two weeks you're good you should be good so then I asked her can I start working out she said you have to hold on on the working out you know you have to hold on on the working out because we're going to admit you we're going to admit you and cut you again because your lungs look like it collapsed again <sighs> guys let me tell you say my start sweats I may not hurt. I am trying not to break down because may I tell you that day we really it over and over and over and over again. I may tell you say my eyes them full of water. I may try not cry. I'm trying not to relive that day. So I said, what do you mean? She said your x-ray is not looking good. It looks as if your lungs is collapsed again and you have fluid on the lungs. So remember, you know, the first time when them cut me, I did have ear. Then two weeks after I got back for review, it looked like I have fluid on the lungs. So I said to her, how is this possible? She don't know. So I said, okay. So I said initially when I had COVID, add air and then you know i have fluid i say is that something that happens with covid patients she don't know so i was getting pure negative from her so i said to her doctor that now got me again you hear what i say see him so i said no mm -mm. she said what i mean i said no i don't want to be caught again she said so you're refusing care so i said when is my next visit because she gave me attitude so i start to about the attitude so she said what do you mean when is your next visit it seemed like this you know with the neck what do you mean when is your next visit so i said when is my next visit because i was thinking to myself if she's giving me attitude you know maybe she had a bad day maybe when my next visit come i'll get another doctor who might be able to explain things better that is what i was thinking so she said there will be no more visits because you're refusing care so all i'm going to do is i'm going to call the sister which is the nurse i guess um i'm gonna call the sister and we're going to sign you me and her that you are refusing care at this time my ball me i cry 
because when they caught me the first time I got a long comeback the pain was so intense guys I tell us my ball my feel like I felt like I died and I came back so she called her sister she signed the sister sign and me sign so she said you know what this means right this means that if anything happens to you that you cannot come back to the hospital because you are refusing care so I said to myself and I said to her I said okay because that's another only hospital I'm gonna say my god the god where me serve the god where me serve he never let me down yet never ever 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 so I said to myself okay so we all signed and I left when I was coming out of the room the sister which is the nurse that she called to sign sat me down and I still a cry now wipe my face but me a cry same way and she said to me what happened and she said it seemed as if that doctor is not having a good day you hear what I tell you this is what the nurse slash sister is saying to me it seems as if she's not having a good day don't leave I'm going to call down two surgeons and I want you to speak to them. So when they came down, they looked at my chart, looked at my history, looked at the x-ray and they said they explained everything thoroughly. Explained that it looks as if fluid is on the lungs, that the lungs is collapsed. How am I feeling? So I told them, I said, I'm feeling good guys. At that time, honestly, I was feeling good except for the period cramps. That's all I was having, period cramps. So they explained to me that you know it seemed as if the lungs is collapsed again fluid is on the lungs and they wanted to cut me again put another tube in and they also wanted to operate on me so they wanted to go in to see why or how there is fluid on the lungs and why the lungs is collapsed you think send me the ball before I know my start ball surgery I've never had surgery before I've never thought of having surgery ever and guys at this point I never did think I could have do surgery that was the furthest thing from my mind so I hollered the, the doctor was so professional I'm telling you that he was talking to me like I was a baby he was saying, Mrs. Brown, look, I don't have any tools in my hand. I'm just giving you the options. So he explained everything, told me that I could think about it, told me that I could get a second opinion, told me everything. So the sign that I had signed, they took it off the thing. Because if he left it there, in the future, if anything happened to me, I think they wouldn't look at me, I guess that is what it was so he took it off wrote down that he spoke to me explained everything and that I should come back um, for a follow-up visit so I left there and I went to my gynecologist wanted another opinion when I visited my gynecologist um, he explained what could have happened um, but he said it's possible he did say it is possible so I left there and based on conversations with a few family members they said to me why not get a second opinion you know another doctor elsewhere and guys that is what I did so long story short I left and I got another opinion another doctor elsewhere and guess what that x-ray showed so I did several blood tests I did heart tests I did I did an x-ray after the x-ray I did a CT scan and it is a CT scan that I'm trying to remember what it is called what they did was the I had the what you call it the needle here the drip for the drip and they put uh, fluid in the arm and they did a CT scan 
that CT scan checked for clots, blood clots, any clot in the lungs. And let me tell you something. You see, anytime you are doing anything at all and you have something come to your mind and say to you, don't do it. Or if you're going somewhere and the, the mind says, don't go, follow that mind. No matter what it is, if it is even that you're going to collect some money, if you are going to meet somebody for the first time, if you get that message to don't go, believe me and don't go, don't force the issue. Because when I went and I got that second opinion, you know what that doctor said? They said we did the x-ray, we saw some, what did they call it? Scarring. Scarring was there, which is normal because I had the COVID and the lungs had collapsed and the air was there. But they saw scarring. They said my lungs is okay, it's not collapsed. There's no fluid on the lungs, there's no air on the lungs, there's no clots, there's no blood clot, there's no clot. They, guys, let me tell us a God, a God. I said, are you sure there's no air, there's no... He said, your lungs is okay, Mrs. Brown. There's no collapsed lungs, there's no air, there's no fluid, you are a-okay. I'm going to start ball again. I don't know if I can ball, so I'm going to start ball again. When I say I start ball, I'm going to start ball. So I left the hospital. Now, if me never did have that little thing in my brain saying to me, this lady, I have a bad day. Don't make them cut you. Because I write away them that are going to admit me. You know, that same day they were going to admit me. That same day they were going to admit me and that same day they would have inserted the second tube inside of me and let me relive that trauma that I went through the first time. You hear me, Master Tono? So, I ended up not getting any cut. My lungs is okay. And that was from October. Since then I'm feeling fine. Have let me tell you how the mind works. You see, after they told me that my lungs had collapsed, you see, everything I do, I feel tired. If I walk up the stairs, I feel out of breath. You see, since them tell me, say, my lungs are right and my food and the pump lungs and air the pump lungs, I don't feel that anymore. So, you see, the mind very, very powerful. The mind is extremely powerful. I tell you, extremely powerful, guys. But this is just explaining to you guys what I've been going through. And since going to the doctor in October, I feel like I'm back to my regular self. Um, I feel great. Still wearing my mask. Um, my personal doctor told me that I needed to wait three months before I take the vaccine. So that is what I did because that was August. Um, I took my first shot um, the end of November. Luckily, well not luckily because I was hoping to, to get Pfizer. But the Pfizer, the Pfizer wasn't available so I had to take AstraZeneca. So my next job is in January because with AstraZeneca, it's actually eight weeks that you have to wait to get the second shot. So I'm halfway vaccinated. Yeah, halfway vaccinated. So I urge you guys to stay safe. I urge you guys to remember to wear your mask. I urge you guys to sanitize your hands. I normally do that, but... I don't have increased anybody give me anything i am wiping my hands off wear my mask like i usually do um because after the three months you can catch covid again that is what i was told so i'm taking all the necessary precaution guys and if you are anti-vaccine if you are against the vaccine 
but just be careful because I will not tell anybody to get vaccinated. If you are anti-vaccine, that's okay. But guys, if you are not anti-vaccine, if you are pro-vaccine, take the shot. We need to try and get back to normalcy as soon as possible, guys. Try. Because it seems as if COVID is not leaving now. Because see, they're now saying that there's a new variant out there. Omicron, I think that's what it is called. So what can we do? We just have to live. And if you plan to travel, you have to be vaccinated. But guys, that is just my story on catching COVID, on getting caught, on being hospitalized for two weeks, on them wanting to cut me again because the lungs had collapsed again, on getting a second opinion and them telling me that my lungs is okay, that no fluid is on the lungs, that no air is on the lungs, just because I decided to get another opinion. And just to let you guys know that I'm back. I'm back guys and I do intend to start posting regularly like I used to which is at least once per week or twice per week and I really really missed you guys. I really really missed you guys and I know you missed me too right because we are a family and I look forward to seeing the feedback to hearing to reading the feedback to letting me know of your experiences to letting me know if you had covid if you've lost a loved one because before this i lost my dad to covid i lost him last year april and i was hoping that you know it would not have been so close to me but i ended up getting it unfortunately but guys, I look forward to you letting me know of your experiences in the comment section. Don't forget to tell your friends about my channel. Smash the subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed. Turn your post notification on, guys. That is the bell. Once you tap that bell, it shows you that you can get all notifications. Some tap it till it says all. And you will be notified of my new videos and I look forward to posting new content and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.